Hi, pretties. We're here to invite you to this Halloween edition of AISD TV News. Next, Next on AISD TV News. Hello, and welcome to AISD TV News for the week of October 23rd. I'm Blossom. Buttercup. And I'm Bubbles, the cutest and favorite. Careful, Bubbles, your ego is showing. And, and we're, we're the Powerpuff Girls. Girls. Two phases down and one to go on the new playgrounds getting installed at all 53 Arlington AISD elementary schools, all funded by the 2019 bond. Butler Elementary held a ribbon cutting to celebrate their much anticipated playground. Broncos ready to open it? Yes! Go play! Each school gets two new playgrounds, one for pre-K through first grade, and the other for 2nd through 6th grade, all with shade covering. Those kids are so lucky. Everything finished product here looks great, but it's everything that took place underneath that. Most of the troubles ran into certain campuses, stuff we weren't aware of. Um, all that hard work to bring it up to where it's at right now is really uh, makes it all worthwhile. The first 11 of 19 schools in the final phase have their playgrounds open. Work has already started at six others, and the final three schools Spear, Peach, and McNutt will begin soon. October is all about bringing kindness, acceptance, and inclusion into the community for Bullying Prevention Month. And here in Arlington ISD, bullying prevention goes beyond the month of October. Our 17 Hope Squads across the district know exactly how to bring hope and kindness into their schools all year round. This month, we visited with Amos Elementary Hope Squad as they engaged in team building activities, talked about hope, and planned their school-wide initiatives. Our Hope Squad is working on our theme for this month, which is hope. Um, so the students just finished the activity where they're coming up with different questions of what does hope look like, what about empathy, how can we be a better friend, and next week they're going to go into their various classes, pre-K all the way to sixth grade, and what they're going to do for the kids in second through sixth that are able to write is have each kid write a note for another kid to just kind of give them inspiration. But remember, you don't have to be a part of a Hope Squad to spread this message. So, be kind and always radiate positivity. October is also about supporting Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Ashworth Elementary came together by hosting a blood drive in support of dyslexia teacher Kim Harris. More than 50 people signed up to donate and by the time the event wrapped up, they exceeded their goal with over 50 donations. Wow! The district also celebrated the groundbreaking of Arlington ISD's new junior high that will replace Carter Junior High. Carter opened in 1958, the same year NASA was established. A law has changed since then, from space exploration, technology, and the way kids learn. After 65 years, the new junior high will be large enough to accommodate all program offerings. Located on the site of former Knox Elementary, Carter's band, orchestra, and choir students played and sang as the walls of the old elementary were being torn down. The community is excited to bring the memories and culture to their soon-to-be brand new campus. Over at Martin High School, the ceremonial turning of dirt happened for the new Michael Glassby Field with cheerleaders, a drum line, and a pep band. The groundbreaking ceremony felt more like a pep rally. Hey, and I had a chance to interview a couple people there. Roll the clip. What do you think the biggest benefit of having the stadium is? The benefit's going to be for the students and the faculty having a new state-of-the-art stadium to have athletic events and band events. This has been a long time coming. We're so excited. How do you feel? What is this going to do for our athletic um, department? We're really excited and first and foremost we want to thank the community and, and our board for supporting us putting this awesome facility that's going to be coming. And it's going to benefit, benefit our athletes, you know, everybody thinks it's a football stadium. This is football, this is soccer, this is daily workouts, this is opportunity for band and cheer and drill. So it just stretches across the whole group and it's going to be you know, update us and bring us new locker rooms, the lighting, the scoreboard, everything that goes with that. So it's it's going to modernize us and bring us up so it's we're really excited about the opportunity for it to be. Here. Sounds great! The district is kicking off construction to convert the athletic field at Martin High School into the district's third athletic competition venue. 
The new stadium named the Glassby Field in honor of the district's first African-American school board trustee will serve as the home field for Seguin and Martin High School. The new Glassby Field will include approximately 10,000 seats, a press box, locker rooms, restrooms, and concessions. The project is expected to be completed December 2024. The students of Young Junior High had the slime of their life earlier this month as they witnessed their principal, Kristen Lundin, well, being slimed. Sliming your principal is the only way to celebrate completing over 1,000 acts of kindness. Well, maybe not for Principal Lundin, but it sure was the perfect way to end the school's Raise Craze campaign. Oh, yikes! Raising over $5,000, it sure was well-deserved. Way to go, Eagles! Last weekend marked the fourth annual Arlington FFA Booster Club's Fall Festival. Over at the Agricultural Science Center, here's Samantha Pugh with more on the story. Hi, I am here at the Agricultural Science Center, and it has just started, and there is already, already a lot of people here. So at the Fall Festival um, that we're having here today, we have just a little over 40 vendors. Um, we have chicken poop bingo, which is really fun. Um, we have a silent auction. We have a craft room, which you can go like paint pumpkins and do all that. We have a face painting, Arlington Livestock Association merchandise. I am here with Kendall and her lamb, Ace. And uh, what is it like, what made you want to join FFA? My brother showed goats and I really liked being able to help him out and just the environment's really nice and fun. Is it easy to show lambs? I wouldn't say it's easy. It definitely requires a lot of hard work, but once you get the gist of it, it becomes part of your daily routine. come out next year. As you can see, it is a lot of fun. Thanks, Samantha, for that story. Sure looks like a lot of fun. Buttercup, you're up next with sports updates. Thanks, girls. I've got this. Let's start off with volleyball. The volleyball regular season has wrapped up and four teams will be headed to the playoffs. Martin Warriors go undefeated in district play, followed by Arlington, Haltom, and Lamar. Good luck to our girls advancing to postseason play. Now let's get over to football. We start off Thursday night at Wildman Field with the Seguin Cougars hosting the Ennis Lions. Seguin's opening drive, third down, Sarans Evans hits Malachi McKee, and what started as third and two becomes a 66-yard touchdown pass. Cougars defense gets a safety, and on the ensuing kickoff, Cam Cole returns the free kick six yards for another touchdown. Still in the first quarter, Seguin flies back downfield for a 72-yard Evans McKean hookup. And then a couple of plays later, Evans finds Katerius Brown for this six-yard touchdown completion, making this a 23-zip game in the first quarter. It wasn't until the third quarter before another score was made. And this running back, Jeremy Brown Jr., rushes in from 12 yards out. The last Cougar score was on the feet of Chase Ramirez as he scores from three yards out, giving the Cougars a 37-12 lead. The Lions made a comeback, but the Seguin defense held on. Seguin wins 37-34. Over at Cravens Field on Friday night, Arlington at Lamar. On the opening kickoff, the Colts' Keon House stampeded his way through the Vikings' special teams, taking the ball 94 yards for the first score of the night. Lamar answered with a Trent Yancey to Jesse Little for a 75-yard touchdown pass, tying up the game 7-7. Colts' Dallas Williams picks off a pass attempt and scores another touchdown from 24 yards out.
down 23-7 at the half. The Vikes march down the field and score on this Deontay Gentry one-yard run. Colts defense scores again on this interception return as Philip Conley picks off Yancey's pass and steps in from the one, giving Arlington a 30-13 lead. Lamar's running back makes a big play as Gentry sidesteps, finds Saylight, and then turns on the Jets, outrunning everyone. 65 yards and touchdown. This turned out to be the Vikings' last score. Arlington Colts trample the Lamar Vikings 45-19. Martin Warriors had to change venues as they held their homecoming at Wildman Field on Friday against the Grand Prairie Golfers. The Warriors put up 48 points, seven touchdowns in the first half to the field goal by GP. The first score is this, Brooks Briggins pass to Trenton Miles for 31 yards. Next, Dalen Cobb rushing in from 21 yards out. And then again from 43 yards out. And again from 35 yards out. Cobb finished the night with 113 yards and three touchdowns. Let's jump to the Gophers' only touchdown. Halfway into the third quarter, Caleb Harris punches it in from the one. Martin's Alex Mathiesen gets the ball on his own 44 yard line. And just misses scoring as he is down at the Gophers' one. Next play, Mathiesen finishes the job. Warriors whack the Gophers 58-10 with two regular season games to go. <laughs> Elsewhere in the district, Bowie comes from behind to beat the SGP Warriors 24-21. Sam Houston had a bye week. Now our standings in District 5, 5A, it's Heritage, Summit, Seguin, Everman, and Ennis at the top of their district. In 8, 6A district standings, you have Bowie and Martin, both undefeated, followed by SGP, Arlington, Lamar, Sam Houston, and Grand Prairie. Let's take a look at the schedule for this week. Thursday, Seguin hosts Midlothian Heritage, and Bowie hosts Lamar over at Choctaw Stadium. Arlington will be on the home side as they face off against Martin. And Sam Houston travels to the Gopher Bowl to play Grand Prairie. Somebody will be leaving with their first win this season. That's all I have for this week. This is Buttercup and I'll see you in the stands. Thanks, Buttercup. <sighs> so how fun and cute is this? What's your favorite Bubbles quote? Easy. I want to wreak vengeance on those who have forsaken me. What about you, Blossom? What's your favorite quote? You said to give everyone a little time to understand our specialness. Oh, give me a break, you two. Yap, yap, yap. Can I toss this guy already? Oh, no. That's just my Buttercup quote. That's right. And with that, for ASB TV News, I'm Blossom Bubbles. Buttercup. Have a great Halloween! Okay, y'all, candy corn, love it or hate it? Hate love it. it. What? what? <laughs> I love candy it's corn. Amazing. What's wrong with you? Candy, what's wrong with you? Oh, okay. <laughs> candy corn does not, out of all these candies, you'd choose candy corn over yes. that? I would. I would munch it up. It's delicious. I like to break off the little pieces and just eat this. Candy corn's better. <laughs> candy corn's better. I don't know, I'm just saying, like, that whole bucket's full of chocolate. Okay. okay.